Less than 11.2 is matrices. A matrix is a rectangular array of numbers which we denote with these little square brackets. Um, and we label them with rows which are left to right and columns which are up to down. And the dimensions are rows by columns, how many rows there are by how many columns. So this one would be a four by five because there are four rows and five columns. Each number in the matrix we call an entry and we can label each entry by its row and column. So for example, if we want the entry in IJ, that would be the entry in the ith row, jth column. So if we said we wanted entry two, three, that would be the entry in the second row, third column, so it would be 26. An augmented matrix is a matrix that we use to represent a system of equations. It looks like this, where each row represents an equation, and each column represents the coefficients of one of your variables. So for example, this first equation, 2x minus 4y equals 9, looks like this, 2, negative 4. The vertical bar represents your equal sign, and then 9. And then the 5x plus 3y equals negative 4 becomes 5, 3, the equal, again, the bar is the equal sign, and then negative 4. So the first row is the first equation, the second row is the second equation, the first column represents the variables of x, or the, con the coefficients of x, and the second column represents the coefficients of y, and the bar represents your equal sign with the constants on the right. Here we have two systems of equations, a system of two equations with two variables and a system of three equations with three variables, and we want to write their augmented matrices. The bigger system is the same idea, it's just each row becomes an equation and each column becomes one of your coefficients of your variables. For the first one, it's pretty straightforward. x plus 4y equals 14 just becomes 1, 4, 14. 3x minus 2y equals 0 becomes 3, negative 2, 0. For the second one, you have to be careful because originally they have these all equal to zero, but there's constants over here. So you have to look at each variable and make sure you have its coefficient and they're all lined up in your matrix. So for the first equation, that one goes over pretty straightforward. 2x minus y plus z equals zero becomes 2, negative 1, 1, 0. The next one, x plus z minus 1 is equal to zero. That's the same thing as x plus 0y plus z is equal to 1. So it becomes 1, 0, 1, 1. And then x plus 2y minus 8 equals 0. That's the same thing as x plus 2y plus 0z equals 8. And so you get x 1, 2, 0, 8. So the first column is your uh, coefficients of x. Your second column is your coefficients of y. And your third column is your coefficients of z with your equal sign. Less than 11.3 are determinants. The determinant is a scalar value that's used in matrix operations. There's a lot of different applications of determinants. Um, and we're only going to look at determinants of 2 by 2 and 3 by 3 matrices. You can only take a determinant of a square matrix, so the same number of rows as columns. We represent a determinant with the capital letter D and also straight bars. So if you ever see just the straight bars on a matrix with an equal sign, that means take the determinant. So something like this where it says evaluate like this. So the brackets represent just a matrix in general, but the straight bars mean represent take a determinant. The way that we find the determinant of a 2 by 2 is we start in the upper left hand corner and we multiply down. So in this case we would get A times D. And then we subtract and we go to the bottom left corner and we multiply up. So minus B times C. So multiply down, subtract, multiply up. So go ahead and pause the video and try this one. Evaluate the determinant for 3, negative 2, 6, 1. So I multiplied down starting in the upper left-hand corner, 3 times 1 is 3, and then starting in the bottom left-hand corner, I multiplied up, 6 times negative 2 is negative 12, so I end up with 3 minus negative 12, or positive 15. We can take the determinant of any square matrix. Whenever you get bigger than a 2 by 2, the standard way to take a determinant is by what's called determinants by minors. Um, but I'm not going to teach the determinant by minors way. I'm going to teach a shortcut that only works for the 3 by 3s. So if you ever wanted to do something bigger than a 3 by 3, you would have to do determinants by minors. But there's a shortcut for the 3 by 3s. The first thing that we're going to do when we have a 3 by 3 matrix that we want to take the determinant of is we're going to take the first two columns and rewrite them to the right of our original matrix. Now that we have the first two columns rewritten to the side, we're going to do the same idea as what we did for the 2 by 2. We're going to start in the upper left hand corner and we're going to multiply down and then we're going to subtract, multiply up. But now there are three full down diagonals and three full up diagonals. So we're going to multiply down the three full diagonals and add those three diagonals up and then subtract 
multiply up the three full diagonals and add those three diagonals up. So we start in the upper left hand corner and we multiply down the first down diagonal, so 2 times 5 times negative 9, and then we add the next down diagonal, negative 1 times 1 times 0, and then add the third down diagonal, 3 times negative 2 times 6. And then we subtract, that's the down, so now we have to subtract the up, so starting in the bottom left hand corner, multiply up, 0 times 5 times 3, add the next up diagonal, 6 times 1 times 2, and then add the next down up diagonal, negative 9 times negative 2 times negative 1. So it's still down minus up, there's just 3 downs and 3 ups. So if we multiply and add everything together, we end up with negative 126 for the down diagonals, minus negative 6 for the up diagonals, and so we end up with negative 120. So go ahead and pause the video and find the determinant of the next matrix. Starting in the upper left hand corner, multiplying down, 3 times 4 times 1 is 12, negative 9 times 0 times 8 is 0, 0 times 1 times negative 3 is 0. So we get positive 12 for the down diagonals. And then starting in the bottom left hand corner, 8 times 4 times 0 is 0, negative 3 times 0 times 3 is 0, 1 times 1 times negative 9 is negative 9, so we get negative 9 for the up diagonal, so we get 12 minus a negative 9, or positive 21. One use for determinants is to solve systems of equations using Cramer's rule. So if you have a system of equations, so this augmented matrix just represents a system of three equations with three variables, then the x coordinate for your solution to the system is the determinant with respect to x divided by the determinant, the y coordinate is the determinant with respect to y divided by the determinant, and the z coordinate is the determinant with respect to z divided by the determinant where capital D, the regular determinant, is the determinant of just the coefficient matrix. So ignoring the answer column, the constant column. And then each determinant with respect to a certain variable replaces that variable's column with the constant column. So for the determinant with respect to x, I would drop off the coefficients of x and replace that column with whatever the constants to the equation were. And then leave y and z the same. Then for y, I would leave x and z in their originals, and then I would replace y coefficients with the answer column. And then for z, I would replace the z column with the answer or the constant column and leave x and y the, z, the same. And then just take the determinants of each of these matrices and then divide them according to this rule. Here we have a system of equations 3x minus 2y equals 4 and 6x plus y equals 13. So I wrote a augmented matrix for it. And I'm going to use this to solve with Cramer's rule. So the first thing I need to find is the regular determinant, which is the determinant of just the coefficient matrix without any of the answer columns. So go ahead and pause the video and find that. If we look at just the coefficients without the answer column, we get 3, negative 2, 6, 1. So multiply down, subtract, multiply up, and you end up with a determinant of 15. So now, if I want to solve for x, x is the determinant with respect to x divided by that determinant of 15 we just found. So in order to find the determinant with respect to x, we need to replace the x column with the answer column. So I'm going to replace 3, 6 with 4, 13, and then take the determinant from there. So multiply down, I get 4. Subtract, multiply up, I get negative 26, so I end up with a determinant of 30. So x is going to be my d sub x, which is 30, divided by my d, which is 15, and so I end up with 2. So go ahead and pause the video and use Cramer's rule to find y. So for d sub y, I kept my x column the same, and then I replaced my y column with a 413, and took the determinant of this respecting matrix, and I end up with 15. So then y would be d sub y, which is 15, over d, which is 15, and I end up with 1. So my solution to this system is 2 comma 1. Now a very common question is, well, why would I even use this? Because it would be much easier to use substitution or elimination. Yes, for a system like this, it would be a lot easier to use substitution or elimination method. But if you're talking about higher order systems, systems of 10 equations with 10 unknowns, it would be very difficult to do substitution or elimination. We're just learning how to do it with a more basic system that you could then later apply to a more complex system. Lesson 11.4 is matrix algebra. So we can add and subtract matrices. In order to add or subtract matrices, they have to be the same dimension, so the same rows by columns. Um, and then you just add or subtract each corresponding entry. We can also multiply by a scalar. A scalar is just a number, a regular number, 
instead of a matrix. So if you're multiplying by a scalar, which is just a constant, you just multiply every single entry by that scalar value. So if we have these two matrices, A and B, and we want to add A plus B, we just add each corresponding entry. So for the entry in the first row, first column, it's going to be in 2 plus 3, which is 5. The next one is going to be 0 plus negative 2, which is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 6 is 4. 1 plus 0 is 1. 8 plus negative 3 is 5. Negative 5 plus negative 4 is negative 9. So literally just adding each one. We know we can add these because this is a 2 by 3 matrix, and this is also a 2 by 3 matrix. So go ahead and pause the video and add B plus A, and also do A minus 2B. So this 2B here is what we're talking about, a scalar entry or scalar value, so you just multiply each entry by that scalar. For matrix B plus A, it's the same thing as A plus B because it's commutative, so 2 plus 3 is going to be the same as 3 plus 2. So matrix addition is commutative. A plus B is the same thing as B plus A. And then 2B, I just multiplied every single entry by 2, so I got 6, negative 4, 12, 0, negative 6, negative 8, and then I subtracted that from A, and I got negative 4, 4, negative 14, 1, 14, 3. For matrix multiplication, your inside dimensions, when you write them in order of how you're multiplying them, must be the same. So if you have matrix A as an M by R matrix and matrix B as an R by N matrix, then when you multiply A times B, you get it in this order. So those inside dimensions must be the same. So the number of columns of the first matrix must be equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. And then your resulting matrix is going to be the size of whatever the outside dimensions are. So in this case, your resulting matrix will be an M by N matrix. So if we want to multiply matrix A times matrix B in that order, we need to look at its dimensions. So matrix A is a 2 by 3 matrix, and matrix B is a 3 by 2 matrix. And so if we want to go A times B, the inside dimensions are going to match. The number of columns of the first matrix match the number of rows in the second matrix. And then my resulting matrix is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. When we multiply matrices, we always multiply rows by columns. So you're going to multiply the first entry in the row by the first entry in the column, the second by the second, the third by the third, so on and so forth, and then add those all up, and that becomes one entry in your resulting matrix. If we want the entry that's in the first row, first column, we're going to multiply the first row of the first matrix by the first column of the second matrix. So for this one, if I want first row, first column, I'm going to multiply the first row by the first column. So 2 times 1 is 2, 1 times 2 is 2, and 3 times 3 is 9. And then I'm going to add those up, and this first entry is going to be 13. If I want first row, second column, I'm going to multiply first row by the second column. So 2 times 0 is 0, 1 times 1 is 1, 3 times 2 is 6. And I add those up, and I end up with 7. For the second row, first column, I'm going to multiply the second row by the first column. So 1 times 1 is 1, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, 0 times 3 is 0. Add them up, and I end up with a negative 1. And if I want second row, second column, I'm going to multiply the second row by the second column. So 1 times 0 is 0, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, 0 times 2 is 0. Add them up, and I end up with negative 1. So when you multiply, when you write them in the correct order for your dimensions, the inside dimensions have to match, and then your resulting matrix is going to be the size of the outside dimensions, and then we always multiply row by column. And so the same number of entries should match, that's why the middle dimensions have to match, and then it fits into each of those pieces. So go ahead and pause the video and try B times A. For B times A, B is a 3 by 2 and A is a 2 by 3, so their inside dimensions match, they're both 2, and my resulting matrix is going to be a 3 by 3. So we already know that matrix multiplication is not going to be commutative because this was a 2 by 2 matrix and this was a 3 by 3 matrix. So I set my multiplication up and I know it's going to be a 3 by 3 matrix, so then I started multiplying rows by columns. So 1 times 2 plus 0 times 1, I end up with 2, 1 times 1 plus 0 times negative 1, I end up with 1. 1, 0 times 3, 0, I get 3. And then 2 times 2 plus 1 times 1 is 5. 2 times 1 plus 1 times negative 1, I get 1. And then the second row, third column, I get 6. Third row, first column, I got 8. Third row, second column, I got 1. And third row, third column, I got 9, positive 9. 
The last piece we're going to talk about are inverse matrices. So before we talk about that, we're going to talk about an identity matrix, which is a square matrix that has ones down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. This is essentially the uh, one of matrix multiplication. If I multiply a matrix by this identity matrix, I'll just get itself back. So on the other side of it, if I multiply a matrix by its inverse, I will get the identity matrix. So it essentially, the inverse matrix undoes matrix multiplication for a regular matrix. We're only going to do inverse matrices of two by two matrices because there's a shortcut. So if I have matrix A, which is A, B, C, D, then the inverse of matrix A is one divided by the determinant. So find the determinant the regular way that we do. And then I flip the upper left to bottom right diagonal so the A and the D switch spots. And then I change the sign of the bottom left to upper right diagonal so it becomes a negative C and a negative B. So go ahead and pause the video and try and find the inverse of matrix A, 3, 1, 2, 1. First I found the determinant, so upper left to bottom right, down diagonal minus up diagonal, so 3 minus 2, I got 1. So I got 1 over the determinant, which is 1, and then I flipped the upper left to bottom right diagonal, so 1 and 3, and I changed the sign on the bottom left to upper right diagonal, so negative 1 and negative 2. So multiply that 1 in, and I end up with the inverse of matrix A is 1, negative 1, negative 2, 3. So the last piece of this is that we can use these inverse matrices to solve systems of equations because that's the whole point of this chapter is solving these systems of equations. If we look at this equation ax equals b and we want to solve for x, we would divide both sides by a, which is the same thing as multiplying by the inverse of a on both sides. So a times this inverse, those cancel out, they become 1, and you get x is equal to the inverse of a times b which is exactly what we're going to do in order to solve these systems of equations where A is going to be your coefficient matrix and B is going to be the answer column. The original system is essentially this A matrix, the coefficients, times a variable matrix, which is just a column with your X and Y and how many other variables you have. And that's going to be equal to what our constants are, what it's equal to. So then to undo this, our variables are going to be equal to the inverse of A times B. So go ahead and pause the video and find the inverse of matrix A and then multiply that matrix by matrix B. The first thing I did was I found the inverse of matrix A. So I found the determinant which is 3 minus 2 which is 1 and then I flipped the upper left to bottom right and changed the signs for the bottom left to upper right. So I end up with 1, 1, 2, 3. So now I'm going to take that thing and I'm going to multiply it by my answer column, matrix B. So I'm going to take the inverse of A and I'm going to multiply it by B just like we just talked about. Matrix A is a 2 by 2 and matrix B is a 2 by 1, so their inside dimensions match and their outside dimensions are going to be my answer, 2 by 1, which makes sense because I want an X and a Y. So I end up with 8 plus 4, which is 12, and then I end up with 16 plus 12, which is 28. So x is 12 and y is 28, so my answer is the coordinate 12, 28. So this has been sections 11.2 through 11.4, which covers everything for matrices.